What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to cover multi-threading in Python as simply and as quickly as possible. So let us get right into it. All right, now one thing that I wanna mention right away is that there is no actual multi-threading in Python, at least not in the most commonly used C Python implementation that you're probably running on your system because of something called the global interpreter lock. And we're not gonna go into too much detail here, but what this essentially means is that we have some sort of pseudo multi-threading where we do stuff concurrently and somewhat at the same time. But what's actually happening is that we're switching between the tasks and we're using the downtimes of the different tasks to execute the other tasks. So for example, we send a request, we wait for a response, that is some downtime, or we're waiting for user input, that is some downtime or we're just sleeping with time.sleep, that is also some downtime, and this can be used for the execution of other tasks, and this is what the threading module actually does. And this is just the theoretical background here. In order to work with multi-threading in Python, with the pseudo multi-threading in Python, what you need to do is you need to say import threading. Uh, this is a core Python module, we don't need to install anything for that. Uh, and in addition to that, we're going to also import time, which is going to allow us to use the mentioned sleep function to create some downtime. And we're going to do a very simple example here to understand the concept of threading in Python or multi-threading in Python. What we're going to do is we're going to define a function. We're going to call it worker because it's going to be our worker function. And this function will do something quite simple. We're going to define a variable up here done. We're going to set it to false. And inside of our worker function, we're going to have a loop while not done. So basically an endless loop until this thing is set to true. While not done, we're going to say uh, time dot sleep, wait for one second, sleep one second, basically. And then we're going to print some counter, we're going to, first of all, define a counter up here being equal to zero, we're going to say that the counter is going to be increased by one with each iteration. And we're going to print the counter. This is what we want to do here, nothing too fancy, just a simple function that constantly prints one, two, three, four, until we set done to true. So without using any threading stuff here, let's just run this function and see what happens. This is going to be then running in the main thread. And you can see it just prints one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, now what we want to do here is we want to in addition to that function also process some user input. So in the main thread, for example, we want to wait for the user to input something or to just press enter. Now, how would we do that? We would do something like while not done. We want to say, uh, wait for the user input. So press enter to quit for example, or actually we don't need to loop here, we can just wait for the input statement here. And after the input statement is over, so after the user presses uh, enter, we can just set done to true. So the goal is to have this function running counting from uh, one to two to three to four and so on until we press enter to quit that. The problem is however now that um, this is running in the main thread and this comes after this function. So we will not get to that statement uh, unless this function finishes with the work. So unless this function breaks out of the loop, and we can continue with the rest of the code. If we want to have both things running simultaneously, we will have to do multi threading. And this is done the following way, we use the threading module to define a thread by saying threading dot threat. And then we can specify a target function. So target equals, and we can pass the worker function here as an object. Passing it as an object means not passing it with the parentheses, so not calling it, but just uh, passing the instance of worker, just passing the object worker, which is the function, the entity worker. Um, and then this is the object, this is the actual threat, we can either store it in a variable and then start the variable, or we can start it right away, like this by setting a uh, saying threading dot thread target equals worker dot start. And this is going to now start the worker function in a separate thread. So if I run this, um, you will be able to see press enter to quit one, two, three, I'm not pressing anything. If I now press enter, it goes past the statement and it sets done to true. And since done is set to true, this also terminates this worker. Now this would not work, of course, if I have here an endless loop while true, then even if I press enter, it's not going to quit, because then uh, the main thread doesn't have anything to do, but this thread is still running. 
However, we can also change that by saying that this thread is not an important thread. We don't want to keep the program running if everything else has finished. This is a so-called daemon thread, which basically means if nothing else is running, you can also quit the script even though this thread is running. We can specify here daemon equals true. And this basically means what I just said, that this is running in the background. And as soon as the main thread and the other important threads have finished, we can also quit the script. We don't have to wait for this particular thread here because it's just a daemon thread. So I can run this now and I can press enter. And even though this enter doesn't change anything about this loop, even though this thread is still running, we're just terminating the whole script because this is just a daemon thread. That is what this is for. We can also pass arguments by just passing text here, for example, and saying that we want to print an F string with text and then the counter. So just making up some stuff here. Uh, we can do that by passing arguments. So we can say args equals and we can pass a tuple of arguments here. And in this case, we're going to just pass ABC. But since this is a tuple, we need to also pass a comma. Otherwise, this is just going to be treated as a single value, but we need a tuple. Uh, we can do the same thing. We can run another thread with the same function XYZ here as a text. And you're going to see what this actually does. You can see that it uh, prints ABC counter. Oh, actually, I just noticed this word that we're uh, printing counter, we need, of course, to print the actual value of counter. You can see here now ABC one XYZ one, uh, how these are running in parallel. And if I press enter, since both of them are daemon threats, we're quitting the script. If I set now one of them not to a daemon threat and the other one uh, to a daemon threat, uh, you will see that if I just press enter now, one of them is going to stop um, actually, it doesn't stop any of those. Oh, of course, sorry, this was uh, this was uh, not a correct thought. Because since one of them is running, the other one is going to run as well. Because if we set one of them to not a daemon thread, this is still an important thread. And because the script is not finished, because there is some thread still running, the daemon thread is going to run as well. Um, so setting one of them to false to not being a daemon threat keeps all of them running because daemon doesn't mean that you're just quitting it. But it just means that since something is still running, we're going to keep this running as well. But if nothing else is running, we're going to uh, not keep this running anymore. And the last thing I want to show you here, I'm not going to show you here as a demonstration, but just as a concept is if you have a list of multiple threats, if you say, for example, this is T1, and this is T2, and you don't call the start but you just save them as objects here. And then you do t1 start and t2 start. This is the same functionality here. You can also wait for those threats. So if you do something and you don't want to continue with this here until both threats have finished with the execution, then you can say t1 dot join and t2 dot join. And you would not get to this code section here um, until the threats have finished. So you can see it doesn't even print press enter to quit because it doesn't get to that line since both threads are still running. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.